Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a special joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen and the Ashland School Committee. Uh, tonight's meeting is June, July 20th, and uh, just a little after 6 o'clock. And um, I'd like to call the Ashland Board of Selectmen meeting to order. This time I'll turn it over to Laurie and have you open up your meeting. Yeah, on behalf of the school committee, um, good evening, and I would like to open our meeting for July 20th, 6 p.m. Thank you. Um, do we have anybody in the audience, uh, citizens participation, that would like to come up to the uh, microphone and have anything to say or offer before we start tonight's meeting? No one. My goodness. That's the first. <laughs> See? Wow. <laughs> Feels very familiar <laughs> to us. <Wow. laughs> You guys should sit in all the time. Yeah, you invite us more often. I think no, we're the repellent. We should meet in the library, that's why. Yeah. Um, we're here, we have scheduled appointments, and the first appointment uh, this evening is uh, to discuss the filling of the vacancy on the school committee seat um, left by uh, Betsy Emberley, and in accordance with the Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 41, Section 11. Uh, we have several candidates this evening that uh, we will ask to an interview and um, the proceedings will be that the school committee and their members will ask questions and once they're done uh, with their selection of questions they will turn it over to the board to see if we have any additional uh, or, or comments like each candidate to at least give a, a brief uh, history of themselves and um, if you have a statement you want to read that I don't know if you want to do that first and then ask the questions maybe that may be beneficial sure. to do that first so if you want to uh, come up, we'll let Lori take over with that, but at least have a, if you don't have a prepared statement, just tell us who you are, where you live, and a little bit of, little bit of history about yourself, about everybody. So that's where we're going to go. So at this time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to uh, Mr. Tarsi, who is the uh, chairman of the uh, school committee. Thank you, Chairman Magnani. Um, to, to reiterate, we did have a resignation. Um, a couple weeks ago, uh, Betsy Emberly, she had some conflicts of interest, so the position has opened up, and it's for the remainder of her term, which is uh, now about 10 months, a little under, under 10 months. Um, and I just, before we get started with the interviews, I just want, want to really thank the community. I was really encouraged by the amount of feedback and interest that I got in this position. I've talked to several people this week that I have never spoken to before. And everybody that I spoke to would have sounded like they would have been a, a wonderful option to serve on school committee with us. And you know, given the last couple of elections, where um, there are many of these positions going unopposed, I'm just really encouraged that um, there were so many people that came forward, um, interested in the position. There, it clearly is a lot of talent down there in this town. And I would encourage, uh, several people decided not to go for it um, for a variety of different reasons, but um, I hope those same folks as well as, as anybody else watching this will continue to um, take an interest in what we're doing and step forward for these positions because they're really important. And uh, I talked to so many people that it sounded like they would have been great to serve with. So what we have tonight, we have three candidates that are um, wanting to be interviewed by our, both of our boards. Um, the way that the process is going to work is we're going to bring in candidates one at a time. Um, we're going to ask for a brief statement. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in the position and anything else you feel like you'd like both boards to know. And then um, the boards will, will ask a couple of questions. We'll start with the school committee, and then the board of selectmen will have their opportunity to ask any follow-up questions. We're making every effort to ask the same questions to all candidates. Um, however, it might it might be that we have to ask a different follow-up question depending on what your answers are. So um, I'm going to call Deborah Iho up to the microphone over here. And if you could sit down and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Deb Iho. I live on High Street. I've been a resident in Ashland for quite some time now, since the early 90s, between moving back and forth overseas. Um, Anyway, we went over, thank you, Lori, for your time and explaining the position to me so well. Um, we went over a couple of points, uh, policy and budget that were part of the board and overseeing the superintendent, of course. Um, I believe that one of the strongest qualities you have to have that underlies all of these issues is communication. 
Um, right now I make my living as a writer and I have to do a lot of you know, business to business speaking with people and I believe that no matter how good a policy you can create, if you can't uh, communicate that to the troops that you're going to have some sort of dissent even if it's a great policy. So I think that's a very strong um, you know, position to have to be able to communicate um, policy. I worked for the senior credit policy officer at Bay Bank way back when. Um, I was responsible for analyzing a $2.8 billion loan portfolio. Um, part of that process was keeping everything in line with, um, you know, government policy and everything regarding bank regulations for the FDIC, the Federal Reserve, the OCC. So I'm very familiar with having to stick within guidelines, um, like what would be put forward by the state, per se, for the education system. Um, again, the finance part. Um, I was responsible for analyzing $2.8 billion. I'm quite a stickler for detail. I have no problem going through budgets line item by line item. I understand them. It's actually something my personality does well with because I am such a stickler for details. Um, I lived in Finland for a while, um, actually a total of five years. I taught in the education system. I um, participated in some school programs where we traveled to Russia to set up uh, an international, excuse me, exchange program in St. Petersburg um, where we met with city officials and uh, the, well they call them the headmaster and everything of, the, of a technical school in St. Petersburg. So um, I got very interested in education at that point. When I moved back to the States there was so much talk about the Finnish education system versus ours and quite frankly I think we have some really fantastic points here and I you know I think that we're fully able to compete with Finland in the educational forum and I guess that kind of made me feel more inclined to try for this position. Um, I believe in building on the strengths that we have. I'm a very positive person. I'm not a complainer. I don't get involved in things like that. Um, I believe that, you know, we should find solutions to, you know, our issues. And like I said, grabbing on a strong point and building on that I think is very important. And seeing our education system from the point of someone who came from outside, that, you know, I believe we can do that. So. I think that probably sums me up in a nutshell. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other things, but pertinent, I'm not so sure, so. But, Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll go through and we'll ask some questions, and I'm sure we'll get to, to know more about you as we, as we go through the questions. So, Mark, I'm going to start with you and make sure. our way around, if that works for everybody. Sure. And do you want me to go through the couple that I have or if take one could. at a time? Uh, why don't you go through the couple that you okay. have? And we'll sure. Good evening, Devin, and thanks for showing interest in coming tonight. Um, I have a couple questions for you. The first is, do you have any specific goals that you'd like to see the district achieve if you become a school committee member, things that you're interested in working towards? Um, I just read your, your packet of materials for your upcoming meeting, so I know what you know, you're facing as far as you know, school space and things like that. Um, myself, as a parent of children in the system, I would like to see more, maybe like more parent liaison work going on, because I think there are a lot of people in the community who we could get involved to do more, but they just kind of need to be invited in maybe to do that, because a lot of people are afraid to participate unless you kind of hold their hand and help them. And, um, there are a lot of people with good ideas. They just haven't voiced them yet. And maybe something along those lines, you know, whether you do it through social media or more um, kind of uh, casual communication, maybe, instead of just the, you know, the 
letters that go home or the letter from the principal or whatever, maybe something that expands on that. Thank you. Um, my second question is whether you've had any experience either in a community leadership role or other similar kind of organization where you really have to lead by consensus because none of us gets to make a decision ourselves. It's a group of five of us eventually. Have you had any experience you know, working in that kind of arrangement and you know, any comments you'd like to offer about your experience in that way? Um, I worked as an advocate. Actually, I was a co-leader for a nonprofit for a while. It was a national nonprofit. I was working for a local chapter, and I did work with the, the national <coughs> branches also. And, um, it was advocating for better uh, work policies for families, and in particular mothers, and you know, trying to come up with better work, work home options for um, you know, the mother who has to go back after <coughs> family leave and trying to support her family while also taking care of small children. So, so, and, and so your role as a co-leader of the organization? Um, I was the co-leader for, um, I believe, six months and then I was the advocate for two, a little over two years, which was as long as the term could go. And the last question I have for you is, you know, this is a, an appointment for another nine, ten months, whatever it works out to be. Are you committed to running for the seat when it comes up next spring? Yes, definitely I am. Um, I believe that if I could get appointed into this seat now, that it would be a distinct advantage, you know, going into the elections because, as you know, a lot of people like to vote for, you know, whoever's in office at that time because they're it's who they know. And that's why I stepped forward now. Thank you. Thank you. Gina. Hi, Deb. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, so I was wondering, how um, have you been involved in the schools in the past five years, and what from that experience will you bring to the school committee? Um, I have to admit, most of my involvement has been overseas for the last five years, um, where I was um, you know, involved in um, these you know, exchange programs and everything. Um, when I came back here, I've only volunteered for you know, a few things that are going on in the school when I could. You know, sometimes some of these volunteer positions have been filled by the, the same people who keep going and it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to get in there and, you know, give your input also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but it wasn't for a lack of wanting to. I just, you know, it was a little bit more difficult. Maybe I was feeling a little more, um, that I would sit back and watch what's mm -hmm. available and learn what's going on before diving in and you know, giving my opinions on something I didn't know about yet. Okay. And uh, what are your thoughts on the relationship between the schools and the general government and the roles that each play in our community? Um, I'm a firm believer that <laughs> um, I would like to see more autonomy actually on, on the town levels. I think that there's a lot of um, overhead you know, policies that the towns have to follow, which that's fine. I would be more inclined to want to follow those as guidelines and see how we could work as an independent community within those guidelines um, it, instead of taking everything, you know, word by word, I think. So, thank you. Yeah, hi, I'm Kathy Bates. Um, thanks for coming in, Deb. So, I'm here. Um, so have you been on any committees or groups in town, specifically, like through the schools or sports teams, or, any, or um, you know, the National Garden Club, anything like that in town? Um, I have not. I have decided that this was the time to come forward. I'm one of those people that when I join something, it's kind of my all. It's not just a, you know, I, I don't do it lightly. So I've had small children. My children are now, one is in middle school, one is in high school, going into high school, and one is, has graduated already. So I feel I have the time to make the commitment that I might not have before. 
and then I was wondering, have you, have you been watching any of the tri board meetings that have been going on, you know, regarding the budget and um, some of the override discussions that we've been having? Have you? I've been reading or? everything <laughs> online. <laughs> yes, yes, I've been reading it with a fine eye. Both my husband and I have, so okay. we were very interested in finding out more and. Thank you. Okay, it's my turn. I know we had a chance to chat on the phone, but um, my questions for tonight are, um, how would you describe an effective school committee member? Um, I think someone, first of all, if they were coming in, has to listen, of course, because um, I think it's good to go behind the scenes and read everything you can and talk to people and, um, like, say with you like picking your brain because you've been doing this for a while mm -hmm. and you know what's going on. Of course, being knowledgeable of the government policies that have to be followed I think is very important because how can you give an opinion or you know help make a decision if you don't know these things. Mm -hmm. So I think that you have to learn as much as you can and listen and then form a good opinion to offer something, you know, a solution that you can, and to stay positive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And um, what would your priorities be? What would you hope to address during your time in office and how would you go about achieving your priorities? Um, well, I'm a firm believer that you know, education has to work for every child in, in the system. I don't think it's something for just my own children. Um, I'm not going for this for my own personal gain or satisfaction. I do believe in, you know, a really strong education system. Um, again, one thing, um, like I said before, that I think communication is key and trying to get other people involved in this so that it isn't just a board of a few people trying to push through to the rest of the town. I think it's a good idea to try to sway other people to help in that push, you know, to be able to get other people involved, even if it's just something that's very minute, like you know, speaking to someone else about it. I am, I've seen that in corporations all the time, you know, that you can have a good policy, but like I said, if you don't communicate that well, it doesn't matter because someone has a preconceived notion in their head that they're not going to go along with what you're trying to do. And so I, like I said, maybe more, parent li liaison work, more communication, and helping with the budget, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, going through item by item and helping to find resolutions, you know. <coughs> Thank you. And at this point, I'd like to open it up to the Board of Selectmen to Thank ask you. any questions you'd like to ask. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to start from left to right, so Rob, you're in a wrong year. I wonder if you could just talk about your, uh, uh, your, past, your, your past experience with the Ashland School District specifically, and you know, anything you learned from that or experiences you had, or whether it was your children or yourself, or and, you know, like that. What, what do you think is some of the kind of directions you'd like to move in? Um. Well, obviously, like most people here, I was very happy to see the numbers and you know how the Ashland School District is doing overall. Um, I moved here in the early 90s, and my son started in kindergarten at Pittaway, so I've had a child in each of the grades coming up through. Um, quite honestly, I'm I'm very happy with the curriculum. I feel like it's there, you know, it's, you know, that's in place that I think our children are getting a very good education. Um, I think the way that that's interpreted sometimes may not, it's, I feel that it's a positive thing. I think that we can always work to improve anything that we can move forward, but I'm actually, I've been quite happy with the system. I think there's a lot to offer here. So, okay. just, so any, 
<coughs> so just to, but just quickly then, so what would you, from that, where would you go in terms of your priority, which I guess you've already been asked that, but then, so what, what does that make your priority to approach the school? Well, I guess that when I lived in Finland and everything, I thought our system was very good as far as like elementary school education. It's, you know, we, we are actually way ahead on those points. Um, I, United States, <laughs> Ashland, <laughs> that, you know, we really, you know, I was really happy with that. I guess where I see um, maybe the middle school is where a lot of kind of the, the change comes maybe between performance with students and everything, but I think a lot of that's the tween years and everything too. It would be nice to be able to find some sort of resolution for helping get that, you know, that gap and get parents behind us. Um, as a parent who hasn't been on any committee, I have a lot of parents who talk to me because I'm not affiliated <laughs> and I just would really like to get parents more on board with what, you know, our school committee is trying to do. I, I believe that's so important that I don't think you can pass anything just as, you know, five to eight people against thousands, you know? <laughs> I think you have to Great. work towards that. Carl thank you. Hi, Hi. Deb, I'm Carl Atkinson. Hi. And um, thank you for coming in. As, as you know, the town's considering um, an operational override. Um, and uh, you probably also know that, that uh, um, attempts to do this before have failed. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was curious as to what your position is on that and uh, what you thought your role could be in, uh, in building uh, collaboration um, amongst groups uh, to see that this override was successful, if that is what you uh, feel. Um, I would rather go through the budget first and see what's being done. Um, I do think a lot of times there's a big break between, like, say, our elderly population and those of us who have children in the school system and we're fighting each other kind of for to get these going at least that's what I see on social media what I have people telling me and um, quite honestly as far as an override I know that there's a large dis you know there's a lot of money that has to be found within the next few months, but I would rather have the opportunity to go through the budget first before I would say that I'm 100% for an override, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Yolanda Greaves. Thank you for coming in. Um, I'm gonna take a slightly different approach. Um, as you know, we had elections back in May, and both positions were uncontested. So my question to you is, why are, you, why are you stepping forward now and you didn't step forward back in May when we had these same seats available um, before the election? Because I was starting a business and I have a book coming out in a few weeks and I was working very hard on that and I, you know, I just started my next book and I wrote an article on education and it got me fired up again and I realized that I do have, you know, the opportunity here to step in and, and try to help and make a difference. And I just feel like I had too many things going before. And like I said, I'm an all in person. If I go in and I say I'm going to read the budget and come up with, you know, some options to consider, I will, you know, I, I'm that kind of a person and I'll probably read, you know, a stack this high to come to my conclusions. So sometimes you have to choose your battles and what you can do at that time. And right now I realize I'm at a point where I'm on top of the mountain and I can do more if I want to. Okay, so. great, that answers it, thank you. Okay. Steve? Hi, Deb. I'm Steve Mitchell. Uh, my question is uh, your thoughts on the 
challenges that you think our school department faces, our primary challenge, and then the primary challenges that our, that our town may be facing. Uh, you articulated the, that you're well versed in reading budgets and so on, corporate budgets. Uh, the school budget, a town budget is, is a little different. It's a value statement more than it is anything else. And you know, how we choose to spend our, our dollars is reflected in that budget. So my question again, where do you feel the primary challenges are for the school system and then for the, for the town at large? Um, I think it's going to be squeezing a quality education into increased expenses. You know, I think that um, more and more that each um, town is, each district is required to provide for, you know, each child or whatever that I think we have to learn to live within those guidelines and still squeeze something worthwhile out of that. And I do get a little concerned about how much that is put on each school district, that you have to do this and this and this and this, but the money's not there. And there has to be you know, a change somewhere, but when, the, when it's being dictated to us what has to be done, we're going to have to find a way to work still within those guidelines, but still get what we want out of it. And I think that's probably the, the biggest challenge of all. Going. So okay, thank you. Did, did that answer? Uh, to a degree. Oh, okay. If you want me to clarify, no, that's, please. I, I, I think we should move on. Okay. You good, Steve? I'm good. Okay. Hi, Deb. Thanks for being here. I'm Joe Mignani. Um, listening to what you had to say, I was, I was, my ears pricked up when you said that you had uh, a budgetary background and your financial advisor of a $2 billion uh, budget. I wish we had that problem. Uh -huh. uh, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't. Um, <clears throat> but I, I guess some of the issues that the district faces has to do with special education. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody's, nobody's asked this question to you. Um, if you've read, and I'm sure you said you've, you've talked to a lot of people, and they've talked to you about what's going on within the district. Um, <clears throat> how would you try to minimize the gap of, of special ed funding that the state requires? And, is there were some issues with the state funding formula, and I was kind of curious as to if you have any ideas or inputs as to how you could probably come up with some corrections or changes that you may see working to talk to our legislators about something like that. Yeah, I think if I knew that answer, that yeah, you would, you <laughs> I would, would be have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that it's it's such a difficult thing. I. I've been thinking on it a lot, and I just, um, I think everyone has that, that same question. I, I had been kind of pondering ideas if there was somehow, um, I was reading an article about um, where do these children go after the education system and everything. And I kind of feel in a lot of ways that maybe there should be increased funding in another area or something to help you know families more with these issues but i don't know i don't know the answers um i i have the same questions that you do unfortunately i wish that i did if somebody could come up with an answer i would be more than happy to start a campaign with the legislature you know going in and talking and writing letters and calling and everything. Yeah. But honestly, I, it, it's a tough situation. It, it's such a touchy situation for everybody. I think it's very hard to, you know, and of course you want to make sure that these children do have a good, you know, opportunities and everything too. So it's really difficult. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. It's a hard thing too, as well as a, a financial thing. I think that's okay. I know it was a, it wasn't a, a question that there's a, a straight answer to, but just get your thoughts and ideas. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate Thank you. that. <laughs> Thank you. Any other follow-up questions for Deb before we move on? Okay. So thank you, Deb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I'll walk out with you and we can write to you.
chairman. Just to let everybody know, as Laurie's escorting our demo, um, there's no particular rhyme or reason as to which candidate came before us first, so we did it alphabetically to eliminate any uh, promoting one candidate over another. So it was just done by the alphabetical uh, order of their last names. Who's our next candidate, Joe? Our next candidate is Tim Asia. Okay. Next to Mr. Atlas. This is the hot seat. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. So we are um, the school committee and the board of selectmen and town manager and assistant town manager and our superintendent. And some folks from cable and some buddy from the newspaper. <laughs> Great to get everybody. Um, and as you know, we have three candidates tonight, and you're number two. And the process is we are going to start the school committee, asking you a couple of questions, move around to the board of selectmen, um, and we'd act, like to ask you to start by telling us something a little bit about yourself, what qualities you have that would make this position right for you, and um, what why you're here. How much so, time do we have? <laughs> uh, well, I guess um, the reason why I figured I'll throw my hat in the ring is that uh, I just don't want that seat to be left open. I had the understanding that uh, there hasn't been a, a big rush. There's not a line out to the Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> for the seat. So, that is true. Um, obviously, I don't know much about what's what it involves at this time, but you know, I think I have a some real life experience that could translate into. I'm an engineer, uh, first degree, <coughs> then I went and got my MBA in finance uh, at Clark, and right now I'm finishing my law degree, so I'm a 24 year old. 24 year student, <laughs> some experience in school system. And uh, I was uh, CEO of a hundred million dollar renewable energy company until three years ago when I decided to do something else and I went to school. So that's as far as we've been living in Ashland about 20 years now on and off, moved out a couple times, moved back in. Our oldest son went through the school system a while back, and now we have two girls, eighth and ninth grader. So, I don't know what else to tell. <laughs> well, we can learn more about you as we ask, ask yep. our questions, if that's okay. So we're gonna start with Mark Terry. Good evening, Tim. Thanks for coming in, appreciate your interest. Uh, I'm going to ask you the same questions I've asked the prior candidate and we'll ask the next one. Um, the first question I have for you is what are your goals for the school committee and for the school district? I have no goals at this point. I don't know what to expect. Uh, so I guess uh, the thing is to try to learn as much and see what I can do to help. Um, I am a firm believer of financial responsibility. Let's get that out right, of, right out of the bag. And good, bad, or indifferent, I don't believe in overrides. So there goes my vote, right? But the thing is that I do think that um, you have to do what you can with the budgets. Budgets are what they are. They can, you can play with them a little bit, but I'm a firm believer that there has to be some, you know, that it's a package of savings and cost increases. So I guess that's my goal, if I were to get in. Thank you. Um, second question is, have you had any experience in any kind of community leadership role where you're basically working towards consensus in terms of decision making? Because as you know, school committee is going to be five members we only make decisions by a vote of the committee. Have you had any experience working in that kind of environment? Um, well, for the past 14 years, I've been making uh, presentations to 
the board of directors where there was always voting. And sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. And it's a matter of, I think that you have to be able to take, take your losses, if you will, if you're a different opinion. And uh, you have to go in with a consensus and go from there. You can't hold grudges, otherwise you're not gonna get anything done. So I was in, in Finland, I was a few years uh, in a similar role at a university uh, trust position, two years. But um, that position was more or less pure uh, fundraising. And I resigned after about a little less than two years. And I figured that's, that's not something that I'm looking to do. And that may lead into my last question, which is, if you're appointed by the board and, and the school committee tonight, are you committed to running for the position when it comes <coughs> open in the spring? Yes, I am. And mm -hmm. that's probably a number two reason why I figured I'll, I'll come in here tonight, because I do believe that, you know, I'm not a Nashlander. I wasn't born here, I, you know, all that stuff, obviously. I, we know very few people from the town and I do think that if the election comes, if I go in as a candidate, I would have a fairly slim chance. But if you're incumbent, you always have a better chance. So yes, I would be willing and capable of running in come May. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Tim, I'm Gina Denovan. Thank you for coming tonight. You're welcome. Um, I was wondering, how have you been involved in the schools in the past five years? And what from that experience will you bring to the school committee? You mean Ashland schools? Yes. I have not been involved in Ashland schools at all. Have you done any volunteering? Or? None whatsoever. Okay. okay. And um, what are your thoughts on the relationship between the schools and the general government and the roles that each play? I think general government sets the, uh, more or less the parameters and the guidelines but we all know that those guidelines are a line drawn in water. They give you a direction, but I think there's a lot of uh, adjustments that can and should be made within those parameters. So I don't think that there's going to be any, uh, I think that there's a, a place for <coughs> local decision making. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Kathy Bates. Thanks for coming in. Hey, Kathy. Um, so I think you've already answered this question. You haven't been on, or have you been on any other committees in town? No. Nope. Not just the schools, but other groups. I used to travel 200 <laughs> days a year. <laughs> so no, no time. So okay. I had no time for yeah. a lot of other stuff. Sure. But uh, like now I said, those days are. You don't have time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have to um, and then my second question is, have you been watching some of the tri-board meetings that have been going on the, in regards to the budget and um, some of the discussions that have been talked about for the override? I am very interested in the budgets, and I saw the budget when it came, when there, there was a lot of discussion about it, was it a few months ago? And I looked at those numbers, and, and I'm, uh, I'm very interested in seeing what's behind the numbers, where do they, you know, how they are formed and formulated. But uh, I have not, you know, done anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Tim, how would you describe an effective school committee member? I think an effective school committee member has to be interested in what's going on, number one. I think they have to be able to make the meetings. If you don't make the meetings, I think that that shows disinterest. Um, I think you have to ask three questions for every answer you get. Because the more you ask, the more you'll find out. I think you can't take anything as, as given. You have to question everything from 
the foundation to the decision making process to make sure that you know what you are voting. I, I think that and what decisions you're making because I think that there are a lot of people that are very quick draw to make a decision, yes or no, or good or bad, without slightest knowledge of what's going on. Thank you. And then what are the major priorities that you would hope to address if you were to become a school committee member? What are your priorities and, and how would you um, how would you make that happen? I think that I know it sounds a little perhaps uh, shooting high, but I think that Ashland School is overall, the ratings are pretty good right now. Probably better than they've ever been up to this point. But I think that the better you get, the more chances you have of failing. Because the higher to the, of the pyramid you climb, the faster you fall down. So I think you can't take that and rely on your past success. I think you have to be looking at new ways constantly, comparing what are other organizations doing and seeing what their success rate is and what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. And I think you can't be afraid of di trying different things. If you, are, if you fear failure, you'll never try anything. I think you've got to be, and you've got to be able to say, yes, we screwed up, we'll fix it, we'll go on again. Thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mark. Rob, we're going to start with you again. Hi, Tim, thanks for coming in. I'm Rob Shear. Um, nice to meet you. I have to. So, what's your relationship to the previous candidate? Are you, My wife. Your wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so both you and your wife applied for all right. Interesting. Okay, that wasn't the question I asked her. Um, <laughs> but so uh, my question is, uh, given uh, you know, if you could describe briefly your past experience, either you or your children's experience with the Ashland Public School System, and what uh, and what lessons you you took from that, and and what direction you think the school should go as a result of what you've experienced. Um, that's a tough question because. Everybody would like to do lots of things. If you cut from sports, you get 100 phone calls from parents saying, no sports, cut the art. If you cut the art, you get 10 phone calls, and so forth. So unfortunately, I, I don't uh, know. I don't have an answer. I think that somehow it's a variety of offering that that uh, is close to my heart. I think the more narrow the offering becomes, maybe it's easier in some ways and easier to measure, but I'm not so sure that that's the, uh, that's the answer. So I think that I would fight for the last tooth and nail to keep a variety of offerings and somehow make it happen. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Tim. I'm Carl Atkinson. Thanks for coming in. Uh, you were up front in saying that you're not in favor of overrides, and I was curious as to what your reasoning was for that position being the fact that you have yeah. children in the school system. Um, like I said, I'm, uh, I am a firm believer of fiscal responsibility. Um, and I think that it starts with how much money you have, and when the wallet's empty, you can't spend anymore. It's quite simple. And I, I'm i fearful for the fact that Ashland hasn't passed any overrides to my knowledge yet. Um, and I think that I feel that many people may feel the same way as I do, that once the first override is passed, <coughs> there's no end to it that it's only the beginning of the, of the continuous override uh, squirrel cage that'll come. So that's why I'm against. I think that the money 
you have expenses and expenses must be paid, but uh, it has to start with looking into the wallet and see how much money you have. Thank you. Hi, I'm Yolanda Greaves. Thank you for coming in. Um, so my question is, uh, yes, the seat is open, but back in May we had two open seats as well. Um, both people that ran were uncontested and neither one had been on the school committee before. So my question to you is, why did you not step up back in May when we had an open election with two seats that had no incumbents? Um, I guess hopefully I answered that earlier was that uh, if I ran in May, I probably would have got two votes. I hope my wife would have voted for me. <laughs> I'm not sure, but <laughs> you hope, unless she was the other candidate. And the only reason why I'm here tonight, you know, in addition to being interested in this, is that I think that if you were in, it would be easier for you to continue. Right, but, but if, you, if you heard what I asked, the two people that ran were not incumbents, and they had not been on the school committee before. Um, Mark, who was sitting there, had been involved a little bit, but they were both new to the school committee. So why not back in May when there was, when it was all new seats, and why now? Why not back in May? I, why not a year earlier? Why not five years earlier? You know, you could always ask. I didn't. Okay. And to my defense, I did run for school committee 1996 in this town, <laughs> if that's of any help. <laughs> okay. But I guess every 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> my turn. Yeah, hey Tim, uh, I'm Steve Mitchell. Uh, my question is, you've, you've been in town 20 some odd years. You've put three kids, one through the system, two currently in the system. So you, certainly long enough to get a sense of the town, how it operates, and some of the challenges that we face as a community, both as a school district and as a town. So can you identify what you see as some of the primary challenges for, again, both the school district and for the town at large? I was just talking to the uh, other candidate outside when we were waiting, and this town has one problem and one problem only, and everybody knows it. The problem is the train. I think we have to bury the train underground so we get a decent downtown. Without this downtown, the town will always be divided in three different blocks. There's 135, you know, there's 126, and then there's the other side of the <coughs> track. And if I were, you know, in selectmen, I would start fighting yesterday, right by that animal hospital bridge, sink that train in and get it up just before the train station and let's get some downtown going. I know it's a long battle, may take 15, 20 years, but that's the solution for this town, in my opinion. Okay, and how about relative to the school district? Well, and I'm glad you said train. I thought you were gonna say Board of Selectmen was the biggest <laughs> problem in this town, but I, I appreciate that, so. Everybody in the room is getting a little nervous. Collectively like I said earlier, I think that the school system, I'm quite pleased with the school system because uh, we're the type of people, if my wife didn't make it clear yet, that we vote with our feet. If we are not, we wouldn't be here with two kids in the school system if we didn't think that this town has a good school system. You know, trust me, we wouldn't. We would have left a long time ago. But we have seen that we're very happy with the uh, overall environment. Every school has problems, yes. But I think the proof is in the pudding. You know, and our kids are doing fabulous. And they like their teachers. We feel they're getting educated well. So, like I said, I don't, I don't have any, any quick answers uh, how to improve anything. All I can offer is my time and a lot of questions. Fair enough, thanks. Thank you. Hi Tim, I'm Joe Mignani. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking an interest every 20 years. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, I like that one. Um, 
I listened to what you had to say, and I wrote a lot of things down with respect to your background and everything, but I, I'm going to ask you a little different question than I asked uh, the previous <coughs> candidate, who was your wife, um, because I don't think the answer, the question that I asked first really has an answer. So I will ask you a different one. All your qualities and traits that you have, what one do you feel would be best suited to be on the school committee? that makes you a better candidate than the other two? I don't know anything about the other two. <laughs> I would hope you know something about one of them. I was going to say, I hope you know hey. something about your wife. <laughs> oh, only, that's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I'm not going to compare myself to you know, anybody else. Um, you choose the best suitable to your purpose. And uh, like I said earlier, I'm interested, I can offer my time, I can ask a lot of questions. That's it. That's all I can offer at this point. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Your time and your interest. Anybody else, any follow-ups or anything? Okay, so we okay. will go out and get it. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks to it. Thank you. Well, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. what your background is, what the qualities are that you have that you could offer to the school committee. And we will go around and ask you questions. We'll start with the school committee and board of selectmen and any possible follow-ups. We're trying to ask everybody the same questions. Sometimes a follow-up takes us in a little bit of a different direction, but we're certainly the process is we're trying to ask all the same questions. And then um, at the end, we're going to discuss. So we will start by asking you to please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here. Okay. Hi everyone, um, Aaron Williams, 24 Pinecrest Lane. I know every single one of these faces. So. <laughs> um, I have been an Ashland resident for my entire life, except for the four years I was at Holy Cross undergrad, and the two first years that I worked for GE when I was on the financial management program, which is a, a rigorous um, multi-rotation program where you travel within different businesses and within different segments of finance within GE and get trained and um, it's kind of like an internal MBA for GE, um, and then they place you. Um, so Philip, who all of you know is my husband, um, I, we lived in Georgia for a year before deciding we had to come home from Ma to Massachusetts, and I've continued to work for GE. Um, some of my roles have included uh, a black belt, and for those that don't know what a black belt is outside of karate, um, Six Sigma is a process improvement methodology where you're looking at cutting expenditures, cutting time. Um, a lot of it's used in the manufacturing sector, but it can be done for anything. You could do it for a finance process. You could do it for an IT process where you're, you're saving time, energy, effort, money by one of the keywords of lean, leaning out um, a process. And so I am a certified mass, uh, black belt in Six Sigma quality. And that means that I've done two projects that have saved my company X number of millions of dollars or saved time and effort. And I've also mentored two green belts. Green belts are the first level of certification. And um, so I did that role two years ago. Currently, I am a region finance manager for General Electric uh, in the power generation services Group. I work from my home full time, so that's why I'm here, even though you don't really see a GE office in this area. Um, I manage a budget that's probably about 10 times the size of Ashland's budget, <laughs> the entire <laughs> town. Um, but I, even though I'm used to working with big numbers, I manage jobs that are down to a $2,000 call-out job where we send a couple of field engineers for a couple of hours and working the finances for that. 
the same way I do selling large capital parts to a customer. Um, as far as my involvement in town, my husband and I like to call ourselves Polita nerds. We're, <laughs> we are very involved in kind of not only nationally but locally what's going on and being active. Um, and as our kids are growing and becoming less dependent, the more we can show up at meetings and be active and that's how so many of you I have met this past year. Uh, as far as this position, uh, it was actually in this room, one of the tri-board meetings where it was asked that I kind of, kind of jokingly, but I think it was also kind of real to join the FinCom committee. And I did want to be involved, but I, prior to the election, did not want to make anything final. Um, Philip has been extremely supportive of my career, and it was time for me to take a back seat and be supportive of his. And so I was not going to do anything to jeopardize uh, anything with that. Not going to sit on any committees, not create any just wasn't going to do anything to jeopardize what he was after. And so now that this opportunity has presented itself um, and I've gotten to know a lot of the school committee members, worked on Chapter 70s, have hopefully been an asset to the town in, in ways, in a non-serving way, that this just kind of happened to be serendipitously come up and now I can potentially do that as a, an appointed official and maybe one day an elected official. Thank you. So we're going to start with a go on round room, and we're going to start with Mark Terry. Good evening, Erin. Thanks for coming in. Um, I'm going to ask you the same three questions I asked the other two candidates. So the first one is, um, if you're appointed, what are your priorities, your goals for the school committee and the school district? Um, so one of my priorities is to keep pressure on the state and the DOE for Chapter 70. Uh, you know, when Jim, Michael, and I went in, we got some answers. But I'm not fully satisfied to this point, and I think there's more we can do. Um, and I think we have the ability to prove our case there and just keep working that. Um, I think as the school committee and its school slash town looking at our space needs and what the short and long-term view are is there um, as far as our facilities, um, the shortcomings that we have with the growing enrollment. Um, and I would say my third priority is making sure throughout the budgetary process that the arts um, and what I would call more specialized programs are preserved. I look at things like theater, um, computing, uh, Excel courses, economics, some of the, not your core competencies, but some, I, I look at those places not only as more character development, um, but those are the places where I believe a lot of at-risk teenagers find a home. And mental health and stress is a very important thing for teenagers, much more so than when I went through Ashland High School. And we see that with some of the care packages that the PTO sends during testing time and some of the messages that Jim sends about um, you know, stress for our high schoolers and how to deal with that. And I think when we look at our budget, trying to make sure that we preserve those sort of programs where the kids, and I'll be completely honest, those were my havens. I was in Mr. DeYoung's art class, and I lived there, and I felt at home there, where I did not feel at home in some other places. And so I think that that's a very important thing for me, to make sure that um, we do what we can. Because I know it, it, those always seem to be the first things on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, the second one is, and you've talked a little bit about this just in introductory comments, but I know you've been in town for a long time. Um, other experiences working in a sort of community leadership role where decisions are made by consensus. Can you, if you could talk a little bit about your experience in that area. Um, so I have been, um, it's a new sort of position, but I am a volunteer baby wearing educator. And so what that is, is um, teaching moms how to wear their children. You see people at the farmer's market um, a lot, like with their kids on their backs or their fronts. Um, there's safe ways to do that, and it's a growing thing. And um, So I'm part of a, a group called the Baby Wearing International of Boston. And we have to decide, you know, when our meetings are and who's going to lead them or what the topic's going to be. So. Um, that's one of the volunteer things I've done. Um, I've also coached previously for the Ashland Demons Youth Hockey. And so working with parents on, you know, getting their kids, like little, little ones, you know, playing hockey um, and being part of the coaching staff and deciding what's 
going to be coached and what's going to be taught and what's part of the kind of on ice curriculum. Um, I would say more consensus building in more in my professional rather than community roles, just because um, the, at least the last couple years um, was busy with having a baby and um, <coughs> helping my mom pass away with dignity. So it's more been in my in my corporate roles of working with teams. So as part of being a black belt, you lead what are called workouts. And the workouts could be looked at kind of like triboard, where you're bringing groups from different areas, different expertise, having them come together, work on a problem, come up with tasks and um, checklists and, and a rhythm for reporting out and, and progress reports. So I'm very adept at using like Microsoft Project to manage a project and um, and black belt certification is essentially project management. And when you're working in the corporate environment, you have, say, IT, you have finance, you have operations, and you're, no one is one better than the other. So I'd say, more recently, most of my consensus building is, is in the corporate environment. Um, and in that environment, I would say, I usually, not only because of my certification and, and what that makes me within my company, but just my personality, I tend to take on a leadership role and a consensus building role. Um, Thank you. And the last one is, if you're appointed tonight, are you committed to running for the seat in the spring? Unless one of you drives me absolutely bananas, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I don't know if I should take that, so no. <laughs> I would say I'm 99.9% there, yes. But you're giving yourself that little cushion, yeah. just in case. You never know. Fair enough. <laughs> We've been warned. Yeah. Hi, Erin. It's good to see you, you tonight. Too. Thank you for coming. Um, <coughs> could you tell us, how have you been involved in the schools in the past five years, and what from that experience will you bring to school committee? So my biggest involvement was this spring with the budget process mm -hmm. and Chapter 70. And it started out as going to the meetings, hearing about why Ashland, and just looking at the numbers of funding between us and Holliston and Medway. And I'll be honest, I'm a geek. I'm a numbers person. And, but I also wanted <coughs> Philip, and he wanted to be able to speak eloquently to these topics when we were questioned about it. And so I took it upon myself to learn. And you don't pull on the string of Chapter 70 without diving down a giant rabbit hole and crawling your way out. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I literally took the state spreadsheet and rebuilt it so I, knew the, I know the formula inside out. And, and then using that to then talk with Jim, to talk with Michael about, look what's going on in Holliston. Look what's going on in Medway. Why is this happening? Look at our enrollment here. And why, you know, why is it that, uh, you know, uh, an ELL kid is held, or counted as one child, but a special needs kid is only counted sometimes as like a quarter of a child, depending on how things are calculated. So um, that's been my major involvement. Um, my, you know, I, I, back in 07, <coughs> when the, li kind of like the, libra the librarians override, back then, I was pregnant with Chase at the time, and I got a little involved and went to meetings. Um, but Chase was a very sick child um, as a little one and had to, we stepped away from everything in our life to kind of raise him. Mm -hmm. And then we were kind of getting on our feet and then like, okay, let's try to have our family. And my mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer and her battle was six months. And we just, again, had to step away from everything and then had Griff. So it's been the slow, like he's a great baby, easy. So <laughs> you can get involved much earlier. Um, than we did with Chase. But Chase is seven and uh, gonna be a first grader at Warren and um, Griff is two. And he'll be at Pitaway probably next year. Okay, thank you. Um, what are your thoughts on the relationship between the schools and the general government and the roles that each play? I think it needs to be a partnership. I know uh, that history in our town, it's been an us versus them and it's not only the dialogue of the elected officials and the appointed boards, but I think it's, we need a dialogue in the newspaper and uh, talking about, you know, a, a strong school system benefits everyone as far as property <coughs> values, as far as reputation of your community. You, it needs to not be a, an, a relationship that has any animosity. Mm -hmm. um, we're all working together to try to make a wonderful town and when you look at Ashland, Ashland is 60% students and their parents. And 
but then the voting public is not always that same 60%. And it's very rarely, it's more skewed towards, obviously, those that their kids have graduated and they might be a little bit older. And so the, the concerns are different. Personally, I don't look as, as I get older, my concerns are different, but my care for my community as a whole, like I know what it's like to be 25 and a first time home buyer. And that doesn't mean that those values, like, you know what I mean? We need to care more holistically about the community and not just be in our own little bubble of, oh, well, we need money over here, so that's the only thing that's a priority. And almost making like a mission statement for the town of like, what are our top three or top five things that we really want and whether the, things are school or their town, putting those together and everybody working towards those. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Hi, Erin. I'm Kathy Beats. How are you? Thanks for coming in. Um, so I think you've already answered this question. Are you, have you been involved in other committees or groups in town? Um, well, I guess it doesn't have to be school related or, you know, any <coughs> Yeah, the, the demons has been the, the, the biggest yeah. one. Um, yeah. And then, I don't know, Phil and I kind of come as a package deal. So <laughs> even when it's like more him, it, you know, there's someone always in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the other question I, I haven't been asking is, have you been watching or attending any of the tri board meetings? <laughs> the override <laughs> discussions? So not, I have been watching some online at home. Um, we actually don't have cable. Which <laughs> so, so we like have to watch a couple days after yeah. when it's posted online, or we'll watch Yolanda's show, or um, you know we read what's going on on the message board. So that's what, how we keep our pulse. I'll be honest though, we were fried after the end of the election, and um, just need I needed a breather just mm -hmm. for a little bit. But now getting back in the game. All right, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, Erin, my question for you is, um, how would you describe an effective school committee member? Um, I think honesty has to be the top thing. Um, you know, no backroom dealings, no trying to get consensus before a meeting happens. And I know those are against open meeting law, but we have seen time and time again in the news where stuff like that happens. Mm -hmm. And I think really, if we're all elected members, no one person's opinion, no matter how many kids they have, no matter what position those kids in the school system are, or even if they have no kids in the school system and they're, so, and they're on the school committee, that everyone's coming to the table like um, authentically and, and, a, and in a way that respects what the laws are of the school committee and also respects all the other opinions on the school committee. And, you know, just because I'm finance doesn't mean I necessarily am always going to have the perfect answer for a, a finance uh, question related to the budget. And I wouldn't look down on any of the other members, even if they didn't have a finance background, that if they say, well, hey, this doesn't make sense and let's talk about it, that opinion needs to be respected. I think it's all about respect and authenticity and really upholding this as a, as a process. I just look at all of town government as really the purest democracy. We see like what happens when corporations get involved and there's no corporate influence in a town really. And I think holding on to that pure sense of democracy I think is really important. Thank you. And then finally, uh, you kind of answered my other question too when you answered Mark's questions about priorities, but I'll just ask you generally because your kids are really little right now, and, but you've been through the Ashland school system mm -hmm. yourself. and. What are, what's your vision for education in Ashland moving forward? <sighs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to what I just said about authenticity mm -hmm. and um, honesty. I'll be honest. My vision for a school would include shop and home ec and more of the programs that teach life skills, having a garden, letting kids garden, less testing, more focus on preparing for the next step versus preparing to take a test. Mm -hmm. I understand those opinions are not very popular <coughs> and also don't align with what the state guides us that we have to do. So I understand that my personal opinion about education doesn't really matter here. 
I know we have to make a good school system within the bounds of what we're allowed to do and what the budget allows us to do. And I think you can be, I know a lot, that buzzword that we had this spring throughout the budget process was creativity. How can we be creative within the school system to have those little nuggets mm -hmm. of the things I'm talking about without, you know, we're not gonna turn into a Montessori farm school anytime soon, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but to be able to, like when, I, like I was talking about, I lived in Mr. Young's art classes, but Mr. Beaton also taught me shop. And who do you think owns the power tools in my house? <laughs> <laughs> not Phil. And they're not pink either. Like they're legit power tools. And those skill, and I, I get it. We're not going to get those days back anytime soon. But taking a cautious approach. I, I do see a lot because of, I have teacher friends and see a lot about what the Mass Teachers Association is doing and looking at PARC. Um, I think a slow and steady approach with adopting PARC fully is, should be a priority for Ashland and not necessarily jumping in head first. Um, and I think embracing the fact that we are a community that is, we're green, we're, we have a really kind of nice diverse background like we saw with the Indian <coughs> Celebration Day at, at the farmer's market. Like when I went to school there were two people of color in my class and one of them we didn't figure out was actually Indian and not African until like very, until we were m pretty much in high school. And that I think is a sad testament to being like not, not having a um, diversity awareness. And I love that part of Ashland. Sometimes that comes out in really ugly ways when we're talking about low income housing or we're, we're talking about the impact of apartments and a lot of the connections between the minority students and what that does <coughs> to our budget. And for Ashland, making sure that we're always talking about our community, no matter who they are, in a really positive manner because there were definitely detractions growing up here and being so isolated and being so lack, lacking diversity. And when you go out in the real world, it's a lot different. And I think like really making that a strong core of our schools. Thank you. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. Thank you. Okay, moving along. Okay, Rob. Hi, Hi. Hi. So um, why did Phil apply to <laughs> He's not allowed to. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, and that was that was a discussion because obviously Philip wants to be in public service, sure. but um, he cannot because this this position is responsible via the superintendents uh, and whatnot for the school facilities, and Eric Heidman is his manager, and so it's a major conflict of interest for him to <laughs> to manage his manager. <laughs> All right, thanks. So. Um, You've addressed a lot of this, but I'll just say, in terms of the specific experiences that you've had in the public schools, and I guess you're, 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 you're thinking about your children, um, is there, you know, what lessons and kind of specific things, more specific, I think, would you think about um, that the needs are um, as, as a school committee member? What would you, you know, from your observations of the Ashland public schools, what, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And, and you, talked a lot of different things, but maybe just kind of briefly in specifics about that you picked up on. So Chase is my first, so he's really the only one I've had the experience with. And um, when I walk in the buildings, I see the space needs, but I also see, like, it's really cute to walk down and be like, Chase, this was my third grade classroom. And that's really cute and all, but then you go, oh, this room looks exactly the same as it did <laughs> in the late 80s, and it hasn't changed. Um, so I do think the facilities, like, there, I've gone to different things. Like, I remember the Halloween parade, and we walk, you know, they start downtown, walk to the Mendez School, and walking into the gym, and I saw, like, a water drip moldy thing on the back of the bleachers, and I took a picture of it and sent it to Phil, because I know it's going to get to the facilities director there's a drippy thing that's in the small gym at the high school. I think our facilities don't reflect the community we want right now. Um, and that's not to say that they can't, 
And I'm not talking about <coughs> four brand new schools by any means. But I think there's a little bit that can be done to modernize our schools. Um, I think IT is a very important part of schools now. Um, you know, like I said, I'm a nerd. My kids are going to be raised very nerdy <coughs> and have access to technology. But there's kids that aren't as fortunate to be able to afford technology or their parents aren't as literate with technology. But we need to provide those opportunities because I don't know anyone that's going into a job, no matter what you do, that you're not going to touch a computer on a daily basis, pretty much. Even if you're a plumber, you're still going to, by then, you're going to be doing your invoicing on your iPhone. And so um, having technology available. My son has some very mild special needs. Um, he And I can already see where technology is going to be helpful with that. He has low muscle tone and problems handwriting. And so you leveraging technology, especially with our special needs students, um, and that goes from anyone who is very a simple case, like my son, to our nonverbal autistic kids that can use an iPad to communicate where they can't verbally communicate. Um, so I think technology and um, upgrading those sort of things, and I've heard from the teachers as well. Um, one thing, and it was more under the, it was a thought more for Philip as the energy manager and looking at sustainability efforts, and as we registered our kindergartner and seeing the stack of paperwork that was about this tall, we're killing a bunch of trees and creating a lot of extra work and storage space for these documents. And I think we have a big opportunity for an online documentation system to, that would potentially cut costs and streamline. It's thinking about like a lean Six Sigma project. If I was coming into the town as a consultant, looking at the paper trail that the schools create is one thing that I think has big opportunities. Hey, Carl. Hey, Carl. Um, you mentioned uh, throwing bananas. <laughs> a, expect bananas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've only been here two months. <laughs> Should I just turn around? No, no, no. no, no, no. no. <laughs> just expect bananas. Um, but <laughs> this is something From else. From which one of us? That, yeah. I, that I can't Tell me in the hall later. <laughs> you mentioned you were in Mr. DeYoung's class and you felt comfortable. Yeah. I was in Mr. DeYoung's band. <laughs> and I didn't feel comfortable. <laughs> but, um, but we are very good friends. <laughs> but you mentioned it twice, so I couldn't let it go. Uh, uh. But my questions are, um, what, do you, what do you see as the most compelling issue in Ashland that's either impacting the school or stressing the school system? Budget override. That's the big one. I mean, we're looking at the budget deficits over the next couple of years. We have space constraints with Warren and modular classrooms. Um, we're, if you look at what Ashland provides as a school system and you look at the other towns around us, towns around us have French and Spanish immersion starting in kindergarten and three to four languages at the high school level. We're because of budget cuts, probably going to be a two, two language, if not one, in the next four years. And no, there's no languages at the kindergarten level at all. Um, the things, when, when you read the paper about the things that the other towns are asking for when they're in their budgeting process, they're nice to have. They're like, oh, can we have the sports fee be $50 instead of $75? Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about five teachers or how many aides and I think our needs are a lot, are a lot stronger, <coughs> and um, we really need to do something to, to be able. And it's not just the schools. Like I said earlier, talking about the holistic town, it's the town as a whole. Um, we don't have the commercial revenue, and we just have a, an odd mix of housing. Our housing stock is very different from surrounding towns, um, and that puts us at a disadvantage with our tax revenue versus our student population. It's a, it's a complex situation. And um, I really think the, the budget and the override and is kind of, it, you're, you're all focusing right now in the right place. Well, you mentioned earlier something about a vision. And I think really that <coughs> that's lack of vision that has led, at least from my perspective, yep. to some of these things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I have a follow-up question. What would you do? 
uh, in your role as, as a uh, school committee member to uh, address um, the override so that there's a different outcome than sure. the so previous outcome. I believe in the power of data to tell a story. Now, and, and in such, the override is really complex and it touches a lot of nerves and it, you get immediate reactions from people because all they hear is like, I'm gonna pay more taxes. But when you can visually tell the story uh, using infographics, those are, infographics are the types of things that you see a lot of times on Facebook where say you'll see like um, a percentage number and then a lot of icons of people lined up and some of them are colored in and some of them are not. And it's just the way to put together data and so it's a nice picture of what's happening. And data presentation and data analytics will be extremely important as a part of the override. Um, and that's something, that's what I do every day in work and it's something I've helped the town with is the chapter 70 override. and doing the analytics, I use a software package called Tableau that allows you to do really advanced analytics and do some really cool things. Like if we have everybody in town's address, like we can map all the people and do different colors and shapes and sizes and you have the ability to then tell a story with data. And when you have data that you can't dispute, like if that's data from the mass.gov website where you're looking at say expenditures per capita or um, chapter 70 funding analysis, things that some of the skeptics in town, especially of the override, can't be like, oh, well, you just made that up. Like, no, this is, this is true source data, and I'm presenting it in a way that shows you X, y, like reasons one, two, three, why this is necessary. If you can, we're such a society now, you need to grab somebody within the first 15 seconds. And whether that's YouTube video, social media post, Facebook tweet, or a data package presentation. You need to use those approaches and realize you only have somebody's attention for a very short time and try to hit them with the best information possible so that that stays with them and helps shape their understanding of what's going on. Because if you, if you go have a, a town meeting that's 20 slides long you're gonna lose people, and you're gonna, there are people that are gonna wanna know that depth of information, but to get this going, I feel like my role will be helping prep a lot of that data and helping tell that story in a really meaningful way that puts the, puts the stories of the sports programs, like hockey was potentially gonna be not cut, or was it cut, or like scaled back to club. Putting those sort of stories together with the data from the budget and bringing that together, um, I think that's probably gonna be my strongest um, attribute on the committee, especially for the override. Okay, thank you, and I'm glad you were happy in Larry's class. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Erin, thanks for coming in. Thanks. I won't introduce myself. <coughs> yeah. um, <laughs> so the question that I had asked the previous candidates, you've sort of answered, and my question had been to them was, why did they not run in May? And you've answered that with Philip running for selectman, so I'm gonna change my question a little bit in that um, you know, you've said that you've now decided to step forward to be on the school committee. And so William, I, I mean, Philip, I think would at some point have to then decide that he's not gonna run for selectman in the spring mm -hmm. because you've said you're 99% sure that you will put, you know, if you get appointed, you would look to run in the spring. Yeah. So my question is a little bit different then for you is one, you, as you said, you're the mother of two young children and hopefully you're here with the support of Philip to run for the seat. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, does he support you completely in this? And how is he going to support you as you are a school committee member, having been a mother with two small children <laughs> needing that support at home when I was on the school committee? Yep. Um, so Phil, as he always has, and like I'll get misty if I talk about him too much, <laughs> um, supports me fully. And even when it was Phil running for Selectman, it was the Williams family contribution to the town. And I was always gonna be his backup and you know whatever research he needed to do. And he'll do the same for me. Um, so Philip has actually decided to pursue a PhD program. Um, and in my support of him doing that, 
I may have mildly threatened him that we needed a no pair for another year <laughs> in order for him to complete that. <laughs> so we our, don't need to get into all the family dynamics. Like <laughs> so, so we have an extra set of hands because that is a concern for me. Is like how right. do we as a family stay politically involved when my dad and my kind of stepmom, I guess, sort of whatever she is, like they're both always at town meeting and always at these things. So how do the four Williams people vote and still have two kids at home? And we don't really have like a babysitter um, that knows our kids and trusts us. And how do we do all these meetings and everybody stay involved? So we have an extra set of hands at home to help us. And, um, and that's going to go on for a, another year. And, and that's how we're going to make it work. Okay, because I'm sure, you know, as you've paid attention, it's important that a member is involved and attends as many meetings as possible yep. so that it's five people making a decision versus four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, the only conflict, and I've spoken to Lori about this, is I am in finance. So the end of the quarters is a very tough time for me. And sometimes I will be in Philadelphia or Atlanta for three days. Um, but at the end of the, the fourth quarter is the end of our fiscal year, so the end of December, you're not having meetings the last right. week of uh, December, first week of January. So I know I'll like, never miss that. Um, the only time I see potentially an issue is the first quarter close is the end of March, early April with budget season. But I can at this point in this role for my job make the decision really of whether I want to be in Philly or not. I can stay home if I need to. So, willing to make it work. Great, thank you. Hey, Erin. Hey. How are you? Good. Um, so, the question that I've asked is primary challenges mm -hmm. as you see facing the school district and the town at large. Now, you've pretty much answered the school district part of it. Uh, put aside the state funding component because we agree Chapter 70 and unrestricted government aid is not. Uh, we're not satisfied with. So relative to the community at large, because you talked about a holistic approach, uh, what are some of the challenges or the primary challenges you see facing the town? And then amplify a little bit on your, your how you would tell an override story, a narrative to a different set that doesn't understand infographics. It's not on Facebook, that your dad, <laughs> you know, folks that spend time at the community center. So, yeah. Um, okay. So, first thing, holistic community. What does Ashland need? Commercial development will sink or sail this ship. And Joe, I believe it was one of the tri board meetings where you mentioned the elected folks, and I think the late or early '90s had made a decision to keep our town small, and that was kind of how we got where we are. And I look at two pieces of specific property. I look at the rail trans the Gainer property, rail transit district, and I look at the Farford piece on 135. And I look at those and I, I my heart sinks when I look at those, because I look at it as lost opportunity. You know, we, if you look at what like downtown Natick's done with their new facilities buildings, and with creating, it's a very similar environment that they're trying to create, like Ashland, you know, they have a Saturday farmer's market and lots of little shops downtown. And we all know the struggles with downtown and not until the, not until the railroad is underneath and there's a tunnel and we can really use this whole downtown area and make it a congregating space, can downtown be more of a commercial asset for the town. So then you have to look at the Gainer property and the Farford property and we need to do everything that we can to develop these properties and bring shopping in. And, and I think it was kind of the original idea of some of the things on, that Farford was supposed to do, where it was supposed to be commercial on the first floor, then potentially some residential. Uh, you know, there's people in this town that they want to stay in Ashland, but they don't necessarily want to stay in that four bedroom house that they raise their kids in. And if we create a space, and I'm, not the same sort of model as Legacy Farms, because I think that's too big, it's too much, and there's not enough commerce. But something along those lines where you can create more of a sense of community and more activity here. Like, this whole budget process this last year has made me a more conscious shopper than ever before. 
Um, like I used to go online, fill up my Lowe's basket, send it over, go pick it up. And I didn't think about it. And now I make every effort that I can to stop at Ashland Lumber first. And if they don't have it, then I go to Monic. And if Monic doesn't have it, then I look at my other options. And we have to create those places in town that people want to go to. Carl, you had, during the campaign, you had talked about like the, the restaurants that go along with the green community feel that we have. And there's a little, I, I don't know if you all understand this, word, like crunchy element to Ashland that you can leverage in like Nello's could have been at one of the tiny Whole Foods like they have in Wayland where it's, uh, it's the shrunken down version of Whole Foods but it has a few of the necessities but looking to bring those businesses here um, I don't know what can be done with le you know leveraging the tax lien that we have for Farford and being able to develop that property. I would just love to, that's been sitting like that since I was in high school. And I just can't believe it's not anything yet. Okay, the second question was the narrative to, let's say your dad and his generation at the, at the community center. So I, I actually went to the community center and talked to um, some of those folks during the campaign and they, you know, they'd be like, oh, those knuckleheads downtown don't know what they're doing. And <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> and that, that's a really hard, I find it hard because I know how it is to talk to my own father about things that he doesn't agree with me and it's hard to find any common ground and bring, but I think when you relate it back to, do you remember when? and you try to get that person to feel what it was like when the, they were in different shoes. But it's really hard when property and property tax is essentially the main thing that's going on in our town. You have competing agendas. You have young families that are here that maybe bought a ranch or a small cape that they want the property values to go up and they want it to go up fast so that when it's time for them to go to their next house, they have enough equity to go into the next house. Or you have someone like me that, yeah, I want my property value to go up, so I have equity in my house to pull out to do whatever we need to do to the house or for the kids, or to put that addition on to get dad with me. But then when it gets to the seniors, they don't necessarily want their property value to go up. And so it's really hard to tell the property value story of the commercial growth and the value of the schools and sell that when Potentially, they don't want their property value to go up because when you talk to somebody sometimes who's at the senior, you're talking about the property value going up, not necessarily benefiting them, but benefiting their, um, who their inheritance goes to. And so it, you're, it's a hard line to walk um, of trying to tell that story and, uh, and trying to be obviously respectful. Um, but in, and. And again, like I said, 60% of our community is students and their parents, and, or it's the zero to five kids and then all the parents and the children that are in the school system. It, I'm not gonna tell you it's, gonna, it's easy, um, but I, I don't think you necessarily lose on the information, the data, and the infographics. You lose them on the Facebook and the Twitter, but I still think you can leverage data. You just bring it down a notch. You know, my generation's used to logging onto Facebook and looking at kind of a complex design and understanding what that design is supposed to tell me and getting the story. And they're not the same way, they're not used to looking at a phone and being able to take a picture with it. So you, you simplify the data down, you still can tell the story, you just do it in a, in a way that it's absorbable. Fair enough, thanks. <laughs> hey, you're right. Hello. All my questions have been asked. <laughs> <laughs> really have, they really have been asked. I guess um, the only question that I will ask you uh, to tell the board or ask uh, this explain to the board is, your best quality, what do you perceive to be your best quality and how will it be used to benefit the school committee as well as the town as a whole?
beyond the nerd stuff. Because <laughs> I do think that's really one of my strong suits. Um, having a strong network here and being a friendly, outgoing person that wants to talk and, ha and growing my group of friends that are also sort of politically involved where the message can get out at multiple levels uh, where, you know, if dad asks me about something re related to what's going on, that's going to get repeated at the Monday lunch in the senior center. I hope he repeats it the right way. But <laughs> it'll get repeated in some way, shape, or form. And leveraging the local parents that I'm friends with, you know, when your child's in the school system every year that they get new friends and then you meet new mommy friends and that just grows and grows and grows. And I think a lot of the groundwork there was laid by like, um, Michelle Hudak and Stephanie Sigmund of getting a lot of the parents kind of uh, conscious of what's going on in the school system and people know me whether they know me because of my parents whether they know me because I grew up here or they know me as the candidate wife or they know me as the loud mouth at town hall <laughs> and town meeting people know me and they know that I try to bring a positive approach to things and I'm approachable I'm open and I think that'll be uh, a positive thing and, and maybe it's you know spreading spreading good stuff Around town. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, Joe, we, we have to figure out the next step here. Um, we're going to have to talk about all of you guys. Um, you, you can, I don't know if you want to wait out there or have them come in, but we need to start that conversation. And I don't know if you want to lead that charge. You want me to, but we, it's time to, time to start I'll, talking. I'll, Laurie, I'll tell you, this is, this is a selection process that if this member is going to be on your on your on your board, and, and I'll be honest with you, we will support whatever needs to be done. So I would like you to start that conversation, and we will follow. Okay, well, we certainly want your input, and we thank you Absolutely. for all of your flexibility. So you want step up? Well, it's totally up to you. You can either have them come in, or you can go join them out there. But is, I mean, does everybody? Is it open? I think in the past we've had them come in. Yeah. yeah. So that they can hear the discussion, they can hear the debate, especially because it's not going out live. Yeah, it, it's recorded, but it'll be a while before you can see it. So, unless you prefer not to, but you're all welcome to come back. Um, Do we need to take a minute break or anything? Yeah. Anybody need to stretch for a minute? Yeah, we're, we're yeah. going to take a, a five minute recess and we will uh, reconvene in five minutes. All right. Okay, we're back. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, the audience. I mean, the the public can't see that we have in the audience our three candidates that were here answering our questions and you've been here for a while thank you for your patience we wanted to take the appropriate amount of time with all of you and really have all of us have an opportunity to ask our questions and thank you for your thoughtful answers i think you all are awesome and you all have definitely different things that you bring to the table that would make any one of you a, a great um, addition to the school committee but we can only appoint one person tonight so we're going to start the process of having that discussion and um, see what we think is going to be a good fit for the committee moving forward for the at least for the rest of this term so i'm going to open it up for discussion and ask for some insight and input and feedback from what y'all heard tonight who wants to start i'll jump in i, I think um I share your thoughts, Laurie, that um, we have three really good candidates mm -hmm. for the position. Um, one thing I was particularly struck with is all three have really solid financial backgrounds mm -hmm. and bring a lot of that to the table. So I think the district, the, the town as a whole, really pick up a lot of, um, a lot of that skill set regardless of who we appoint. Um, I will say that um, I was most impressed with Erin Williams. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that her answers um, were the most complete, broad ranging. Um, I think her ability to talk about um, the town and the school as a holistic common entity and, and looking at um, what the concerns are that face us, the challenges, um, I think were, you know, were to, to, to my ear, I guess I'd say, um, sort of the most impressive and, and Really, she has spent a lot of time, and clearly with her husband having run for selectman, you know, she spent a lot of time thinking about it before, and um, you know, that came out in her presentation. Um, the one thing that I would even share, I 
things more specifically, and it wasn't something that was said tonight, but I was thinking about it from town meeting. Um, and Erin talked a little bit about how she would reach out to different constituencies, but there was a time at, at our last town meeting where we could have all seen that if we were looking for it. And we were talking about the solar project, as I recall it. There was some discussion about ex extending the sidewalk over on Howe Street. Um, and Aaron got up at the mic and talked about trying to extend the sidewalk further because she thought that it was a way to make something more positive for the other people who were impacted. And it was beyond where the sidewalk was. Now, that ultimately was deemed <coughs> out of order. But to me, that's a sign of somebody who is a community leader. Um, that's somebody who is looking out for the community as a whole, is able to see the perspective of other people. Um, and I think we heard a little bit about Aaron, I heard some of that tonight from Aaron, and how she talked about how she would present an override. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important because we've talked about the override that you know, nobody's made a decision at this point that an override's gonna happen, but to talk about it, how we communicate about that. And I really appreciate Aaron's insight, and I think at the end of the day, um, she probably makes this committee stronger as a whole. I think this, the experience and the perspective that she brings adds more to the group um, than, quite frankly, you know, the other two candidates. So that's my, my initial take. Thank you, Mark. So I, I agree with Mark. Um, I appreciate that, that all three of our candidates are interested in bettering our district and our town, um, and fantastic that they want to be involved. Um, and I echo Mark's sentiment about Erin and her strengths, um, especially her desire to form partnerships with both the schools and the general government, and again, the holistic approach um, within the town. Also, the experience that she's had in the community, garnering interest and support for both the schools and the town and understanding our limitations and needs, and um, that she has a good understanding already about what we're trying to achieve. So. I would agree that she's the strongest candidate. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would agree that Erin is the strongest uh, candidate too. I appreciate Tim and Deb I know, for coming um, and stepping up. We appreciate anybody that wants to, you know, volunteer and be a part of the community. Um, I think Erin would be a, a strong fit for the, for the group for the four that are here. appreciate all the um, involvement in the town, the town meetings. I remember that exact meeting too, um, and being involved in, in the financial background too, with Chapter 70, I think it has a lot of assets that would, would strengthen this um, community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, I would agree. One of the things that we talk about all the time as a group and for years is that, and I'm sure on your board as well, there's a learning curve when you step mm -hmm. in. And this, normally everybody gets there, we all get there. And um, the, what's unique I think about this position is that it's potentially could only be nine or 10 months. I mean, the hope is, is that you, whoever is appointed will run for reelection and, and you'll be here for a while and that you're willing to make that commitment. But in the event that, you know, it is a short term and we're all right in the middle of a lot of things going on in town, um, the fact I think where it gives you, uh, would give, I hate like, to talk about you like you're not in the room, where it gives Aaron Williams <laughs> the edge maybe, is that you know, you've been tending, attending you know, some of the tri board meetings and really delved into chapter 70 and some of the things that um, I, I don't have any doubt that we couldn't, well, chapter 70, I shouldn't use that as an example. No, I was gonna say, I don't have any one. doubt that we could all figure <laughs> out, that's a lie. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Um, most of us are probably going to figure it out to the extent that anybody with, with your understanding can. But you know, all we all are able to wrap our heads around things over time. But um, the timing issues, I think, that we have now—the fact that Aaron's just a little bit ahead of the game by having been involved, having been coming to some of the meetings—I I didn't know you before, but I've seen you, you know, showing up and, and participating. And I think just under these circumstances, that's that's a huge plus. Um, with the timing, um, and I agree that just with the, with the fit for the committee right now, and um, where 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 we're headed, and I think where we're headed as a community over the next several months, um, I and I 
think it's in a joint appointment with the Board of Selectmen, so I'm looking at all of you too, but I, I think that that might, what the rest of my board is suggesting, suggesting Aaron might be the strongest candidate, it might be a good fit to work with all of us. So um, I would agree and then turn it over to all of you for your input. Okay, well, <coughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Rob. Um, well, um, you know, I was a little, you know, this is a very hurried process, um, mm -hmm. so I'm not, I'm not, you know, uh, I'm kind of going with the initiative shown by the school committee that you seem to want to appoint somebody right away. Um, so given the limitations of where we're at, and we haven't really discussed all the different options, so I don't know if I'm pushing for that because we've just spent the whole night interviewing people. But um, half a night, yes, we're another half a night. Yeah, we're so, um, you know, one thing uh, for Deb and Tim, I think that's part of the limitations. We, we've worked with Aaron, uh, you know, with the, we started with the override process, and this has been a very quick process. So, um, you know, that kind of um, makes it a little more uh, logical that, you know, we, we probably go with Aaron, given that we know her and have worked with her, and we don't really, there's not that much of time involved here right now to get to know you or your I would, you know, encourage both of you to, you know, try to stay, you know, stay involved throughout the talent bank forms and things like that, and, um, you know, stay involved. And really thank you all three for coming forward. Uh, and uh, so I, I guess I'd say, given the limitations of what we're dealing with and the fact that we seem to be making a decision tonight, that, you know, I, I feel most um, comfortable with Erin and the and what she's shown and her her capabilities. So, but thank you for you know coming forward and going through this process. I agree. I, I think uh, it's been a fruitful process for me. Uh, Deb, I, I thought that you made interesting points about communication. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you led with that, that communication, that, that a policy without the ability to communicate prevents it from being implemented. And I think that's very, very important. And I think it's very important for all of us going forward with, with everything that we faced here. Uh, Tim, you raised the, the uh, issue on staying within your budget, and obviously that's something that uh, that impacts the, the entire town and is representative of a, of, a, um, of a large portion of the population here uh, when it comes to these type of issues that, uh, that they may or may not understand. Everybody understands the concept of staying within a budget, and, and uh, sometimes that's where the discussion ends for some of these people that are making these decisions. So I think a combination of those two uh, uh, raise very relevant issues here. Uh, and and uh, I feel the same way uh, about Aaron as is, uh, is, uh, everyone else has so far. And the, I think the, um, the thing that, that, that struck a chord with me was the comment, I believe you call it a mission statement, and uh, it's close enough to a vision statement for me um, that I think that it's, it's something that the board is currently working on that we feel like we need going forward uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as a board uh, and as some kind of guidelines uh, for the town going forward as well. And, and I think that your understanding of that uh, um, is key. Uh, and the fact that you raised that without knowing that we will work on this thing, I'm assuming, um, I think shows an understanding of the process. Um, so although I, I, um, uh, I found something uh, useful in, in each one of the interviews, I, I would uh, agree that uh, Aaron is probably the strongest. Thank you. Uh, I also want to thank all three of you for coming out. I know putting yourself out there is not always easy, putting yourself out there for questioning and, and discussion of why you're doing something. It's a hard thing, so thank you for doing that. And I would echo what Rob said, um, that whoever is not selected, please stay involved, because as you know, we are always looking for more volunteers to participate in many different things. Some of them are long-term, some of them are short-term. Also, if you're not selected, possibly run next year. Run and, and, and put yourself out there to be questioned and, and decide if you're the right person for the position. Uh, as Carl said, I think uh, each candidate had some positive things and good input as to why they would be a good school committee member. Um, but based on the information that I learned tonight, um, I would 
go with the school committee's recommendation of Aaron. So Tim and Deb, uh, I appreciate you know certainly your interest. Uh, I think uh, you know I would agree that uh, um, your your statements uh, had much value, and I would encourage you as well to uh, get involved. There's committees like finance committee. We've got a public safety building committee that's uh, in process. So there's a lots of opportunities where I think your expertise, your skill set could be a value to the to the community. Um, I feel that the we have a responsibility to, at some level, defer to the, the choice of the school committee. But at the same time, we work together, and I think it's important that we work. We we're comfortable with with whom we're working with. And um, I got to know Erin during our last budget process, and uh, we went into the state house together to uh, again try to put some information rather than emotion into a conversation. And I think that's what we're continuing to do. So I think Erin gets that, obviously, with the infographics and, uh, and her abilities to uh, take data and uh, create a story. So uh, I, I guess at the end of my little statement here, I'm in support of, of Erin as well. Uh, I think certainly someone we can, we can all work with. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Tim and Deb, thank you very much for, uh, like Yolanda said, stepping out in front of the bus and, 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 as, and answering all the questions that were thrown out at you and being, well, well, I didn't say bus, but I mean, what I meant by bus, school bus, you get it? That was a pun, but you didn't get it. That's okay. With respect to all the questions that were thrown at you, and I uh, think all your answers were, were spot on. Um, your backgrounds were, were right there, especially with the finance aspect of it. And I have to uh, concur with uh, Rob and Carl's comments that don't, you know, just don't go home and, and not stay involved. Get back involved in the community and, 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 and I like there are other, com other uh, committees that, uh, that have vacancies. Put your talent bank for them and, and uh, we, we need people like yourselves to, to stay involved. Um, I appreciate Tim. You, you, your candor was was right there. You remind me of myself a little bit when you just say it like it is, and that's <laughs> that's the way you have to be. And I and I greatly appreciate that. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I've known Erin for since she was a little kid. Um, I was a dare officer for years. Yeah, we did. We did. So um, all I can say is that uh, I. I her background is, is, is something of, uh, of great interest and importance to this community as a whole, not just the schools, but as the town itself. And um, I have to concur with my other board members uh, that I feel that the selection that the school committee has made of the recommendation with respect to Aaron is one that we would have to back Thank in you. support. I think we do need a motion. So, so do we have a motion? I'll, I'll move um, that we appoint Aaron Williams to the vacant school committee seat. I'll second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is it a roll call vote? It's a roll call vote. It's a roll call vote. They're so. part of the vote too. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And it's roll call. It's a joint vote though. It's a joint we don't vote. have to make a separate vote. motion. Okay. okay. So, so Mark? Terry, aye. <laughs> aye. 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 Okay. Do I hear a motion? No, it's the no, same motion. Okay. No, we motion. just so vote on their motion. Vote on. Okay. It's a vote. It's a name. Roll call vote. So. Atkinson, aye. Greaves, aye. Mitchell, aye. Mignani, aye. Okay. So it's unanimous. Okay. So thank you again. Not thank you just very to much. all of you, but to the, to the several people again that called me this week, uh, the same feeling that I'm having, especially more so after Deb and Tim, you put yourself out there. And I heard things that you both said tonight that made me think like I would love to have a person like that on this committee, as well as probably five or six of the people that I spoke with this week. So you are, are listening out there as well as, as the two of you, please, um, we would, this town would benefit from you finding a way to get involved. Every May, a seat opens up, and it wasn't just this year that the seats went uncontested, but my seat went uncontested the year before, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so, um, you know, stay, stay in touch, stay, pay attention, because um, we certainly need folks like you to, to step up, and I, I think 
um, I just want to say on behalf of all of us, we really appreciate you coming forward for this, and we hope that we see you, you know, involved. So what we do need, um, Joe, before, I know you have some other agenda items, but mm -hmm. from the school committee um, perspective, the uh, Betsy Emberly, who resigned, was also on the override study committee right. and has left the opening there. So we need to, um, as a committee, put uh, somebody else forward to be on that committee, and we're asking if you guys would be able to do that this evening. Uh, we can do that this evening at the uh, selectman appointments. We have two appointments we have to make, and we can add a third appointment. So should we wait till we, you get to that point on your agenda? Which is next. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay. And are you sure that your new your new sele uh, school committee member would like to be on that? No, we're going to ask her first. <laughs> because we're going to inform her that. Is she officially <laughs> now a member? Well, she's sworn she's sworn she's sworn yeah. yeah. So well, we pending swearing in. Okay, um, next on our agenda is selectment appointments, and we have uh, two prior uh, appointments that we need to make on the Water Policy Committee. Um, <coughs> we have uh, a talent bank form from uh, Phil, Philip Williams, and who is requesting to get on the Water Policy Committee. Uh, so do I hear a mo uh, discussion or a motion to discuss that? Well, we don't have his talent bank, but isn't it partly because he's the, um, and yeah. he's, on, he's, he's, on he's our staff right. person. Right. right. Okay. I guess my I, question, why don't we do this appointment first, though? Is that the we need to, why don't we do the, uh, oh, you want to do the study committee, committee and then we can be, yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Well, seeing that we have a position right. open for the override study committee, and we have uh, an interested party that's willing to take on Betsy. Well, they have to ask her. Well, we're not sure. We're, 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 not sure. we're going to ask our new member. What I do know is we've had this discussion amongst the four of us mm -hmm. in, in the last open meeting that we had when we were selecting a person as far as which one of us would serve on the override committee when Betsy was appointed. Now that she's no longer with you, we do need to fill that spot. And Erin, uh, we already know where all of us stand as far as one of us being on it. <laughs> Mark's already on it. So um, no the pressure. question to you would be uh, whether or not you're interested in filling the position that was vacated by Betsy. Okay. Um, is this the data analytics part of the study? So can I? Yes. Thing? So Erin, I'm serving as the chair of the override study committee. So we've essentially broken down into four working groups, one of which is our public outreach, our tax relief working group, our analytics, our nerd group, and then uh, we have our needs group, which is more of a staff uh, function. So that's kind of the breakout. We've got a, a series of public outreach meetings scheduled. We've got individual working group meetings scheduled as well. So it's kind of the lay of the land as it exists today. We have a, pub a actually a public forum tomorrow evening here at the public library, uh, and it was advertised to boards and committees throughout the town. If I may, Chairman Leanne? Yes. Um, you just got appointed to school committee, so you can sit over here. <laughs> you come on up. You're not, you haven't been sworn in yet, but you can still sit here. I'm saying it for the benefit of the public so they can yes. see if you are can see you, yeah. while, we, while we complete this discussion. Um, just don't vote. So, and and, right, yeah, you and can't that vote. way, when you're giving your answer about whether or not you'd like to be on this committee, you can say it in the microphone. Um, right. Yes, I will happily serve on that committee, on the subcommittee. Um, I will, though, need to step away from the full day kindergarten committee that Mr. Kyra has commissioned with some of the parents, but I do feel that I'll still have an influence as being a school committee member in that particular subject, um, and a subject that's close to my heart. Uh, so yes, I will, I will defer that position. We'll let Mark, you're gonna stay on that committee. Yeah. And I will be your nerd queen. <laughs> Aaron, were you serving on that full day as the parent, one of the parent members? I was a parent member. So that appointment will be full We've filled got, by Mr. Kerr. We don't have to we have plenty do that here. Okay. You don't even need to fill it. No. Okay. And, you'll, and Mark will continue to be the school committee member on that committee. 
If I just for a point of clarification, the the appointment would really be just to the override study committee itself, yes. not a subcommittee. That would be done. That will discuss at our next override our next full committee, committee meeting. Right. Okay. So the, the point, question to you really is an appointment to the override study committee as a whole, not the subcommittee as a should be determined right. as a representative of the school committee. Correct. Okay. Right. Yep. Do I hear a motion, please? Second. Second. Do you want to say appendix swearing in? No. I'll second that. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. So is the school committee part done? Yes. Yes. So do you need to know if you want to do I do want to thank you all for accommodating us. I know this is an extra Yes, thank you very much. I know you have some other business, but I really appreciate it. Before you go. Yes. Before you go. We have close. Governor Baker vetoed, and Len Adam vetoed powers in his in his budget process, and <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, Ashley. Yeah, did. we did say. You wanted to second it, and unfortunately for for Ashley, uh, several large items were vetoed. Uh, the twenty thousand dollars that was going to be awarded to. Decisions at every turn has been removed from the from the budget, as well as the half million dollar uh, program for the overcrowding. Overcrowding. overcrowding classrooms has been removed. Uh, right now, the legislature is in discussion and in deep discussion with respect to Governor Baker's uh, portion of, of his selection of his budget. And we need to make sure that Sen uh, Representative Santa Candro is aware of these items mean a lot to this town. Mm -hmm. And so we need to get as much as, or as a letters out and support to either call Tom's office or send letters to request that those items be put back into the budget before we do anything Does else. Does anybody know when the House is taking that vote? Yeah. It's at the 29th. The, at 29th. It's the end of the month. It's the end of the month. Next week? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I have, uh, Mr. Mignotti, I've sure. already outreached to those two senators, um, well, Representative Santanaros and Senator Spoka's office uh, in their top babies. Okay. To Can I make a recommendation, uh, Mr. Sure. Chair, that we, that both the school committee draft a letter to both legislators and the Board of Selectmen do the same, mm -hmm. and then the chairs respectively call directly as well? Mm -hmm. Not a problem. did tweet on <laughs> Santa Candor, and he retweeted it. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm hoping that that means he's, at least we have so. his support, but he's He is aware of it, so. Yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to make that, make sure that everybody was aware of that. So again, we're under the gun. Well, we're meeting something. tomorrow, so we'll, we'll talk about what a letter tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and Aaron, you should know tomorrow we're having a full day. Um, we'll talk, we can talk after this meeting. And you need to go get sworn in before you head to your meeting. Yep. Town hall. Town hall. Town clerk's office. What time does the town clerk's office open? Eight o'clock. I believe so. What time does the town clerk's office open? Eight. Eight. Because I think she could come but just not vote, right? She can attend and open the meeting. She can attend, but if you want her to be effective and if you want the, you know, if you want to be able to make some decisions, she's better off being sworn in. Okay. I'll just stop there on my way over. Yeah. Thanks. Where's your retreat? It's at the water. And, and, and again, I, 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 just to address what Rob was saying earlier, too, for the community about mm -hmm. it feeling rushed, I, I don't think we would be rushing or appear to be rushing if there weren't only 10 months left on the term. If it were a full three-year term and we had plenty of time, but um, in, in this particular seat, as you know, we just went through a whole year without anybody really at the table with us um, for different reasons, and, and so we really needed to get somebody sooner rather than later because we are starting tomorrow to talk about some heavy duty things like our vision and mission and strategic plan and so forth. So it was gonna it, it was gonna be harder to move forward as a four, you know, if we didn't get this get this started now. Just just to give an understanding to everybody. Um, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that yeah. explanation. All right, thanks again. You're welcome. Lord, can you have a motion to adjourn? Yes, thank so you. So I move to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. See you. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks for the special meeting. Cool. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, guys and gals. Unfortunately for us, we still have a ways to go. Okay. And we'll try to make it real quick. Um, we have old and new business to discuss. We still have two other select. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. That's right. We finish. didn't do that. Right. Because we took that in. Uh, water, water Policy Committee, uh, Philip Williams. I move that we appoint Phil Williams to the Water Policy Committee as our staff. There is a second. Second. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, did you say as a staff? He's a staff person. He'll, he'll be on it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And so he's staff. staff to get information and things like that. Well, he's part of the committee. I mean, he's part of the committee, but his as role is to stay as our okay. We Not a problem. Have, did we have uh, another talent bank form? We do, but I didn't have enough time to get on the agenda. We actually have two more for this committee. Yeah, and how many seats do you have? Um, I think we said it. Uh, yeah, I think we said another we five to seven. Yeah. Right? We have Kathy and then we have a uh, here. Okay. So if that one, I put those on the agenda for the fifth. All right, so we got August fifth, we can put those on, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 So there was a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Public Safety Building Committee, uh, Brian Simino, sent out a uh, talent bank form. I believe you all have a copy of his, of his uh, talent bank form in your packets. Mm -hmm. Can I just, so where are we with the public, uh, build, public safety building committee? So we have, we've appointed X yeah. and we have, how many left? Or we so we're still looking for a couple of citizens. So uh, right. Brian Simino would be one. We have, um, and his name escapes me, one other uh, gentleman that's already been appointed. Right. So um, we have no other talent bank forms right now. So we actually have our first meeting coming up. I think it's next week. So that would fill the two, res two resident yeah, we're looking positions? Yeah, we're looking for you know, three or so residents. Uh, okay. So we still have room if there's something that's interesting. So and who's I, on the committee? Uh, so right now you have myself, the two chiefs. Um, and the person we appointed our, for our last meeting. Yeah, the, the gentleman. Mm -hmm. we right. That, that last meeting. Yeah. So Keeney. 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 Paul Keeney. No, 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 no that's, that's our choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so Wrong yeah. person. <laughs> don't say, don't say names. Job. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah, was going to say, he's going to be on it. He's going to be instructed. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's Okay, so. I move that we appoint Brian Simino to the Public Safety Building Committee um, with a term of t as needed. It's still uh, completion of completion of project. Of project. Right. Is there a second? Or second. Discussion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Congratulations, uh, Phil and, and Brian. Appreciate you coming forward and uh, volunteering your services to the town. Okay, old and new business. Discuss to vote and sign the right of entry, Cadillac paint. So if you recall from the last meeting, uh, I had a, uh, a copy of the right of entry agreement. Um, this will allow um, Novus Engineering to then go in and, and begin their uh, supplemental assessment of uh, Cadillac paint. So it was sent out to uh, Mr. Johnston, um, who actually has the property owner. So now once the board signs this, then allow us to then take the next step with um, Novus Engineering and put our application into mass development for the funding of, of that, which uh, the scope of work, the selectment of artists. It was interesting. Yesterday I had a uh, conversation with uh, a lady at Freeman Baking who lives in that area and was concerned about the entryway because of the rate of speed and the amount of traffic that's in that area and where it's such a narrow tur uh, turn. And you know what we're talking about with the fences right up by the by the roadway. Yeah. And she was wondering if any of that work, when it is when it's begun, if they could think about entertaining putting a new entryway coming in off of um, the road off of Elliot, which is Nancy Drive, Nancy. Mm -hmm. which is Nancy. So that may be something to uh, talk we've, to the folks. We've about. talked about that, um, you know, in terms of you know the permanent entrance as as a possibility. Right. Uh, just because of where that where that. Right, it's, it's pretty dangerous, and it's it's a blind corner too. At, at that point too, so somebody's slowing down to to turn in, especially if they're coming in from Sherman, that could that could pose a problem. Right. So. Yeah, it would require obviously an easement from the property owner 
property owner. Right. So. <laughs> you know the property owner. I probably do. Probably do. But that was that was a question that was asked, and I said I'll bring it up yeah. at the, at the yeah, discussion. Yeah, that's hard for us. Okay. Uh, we actually have a fraction. We're actually meeting with the uh, EPA, the EPA, on Thursday uh, to keep this to keep this project moving. So. Okay. We need a motion to yeah, sign motion to, uh, yeah. a motion to allow the, the chair to sign this letter. Yeah. And anybody's had the opportunity to read it mm -hmm. and go over it, so there are yeah. no questions or anything. Okay. Pretty. And I have to sign. I move that we uh, give Joe Mignani, the chair, the ability to sign this right of entry for the Cadillac Paint property as noted in our packet. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Uh, seeing that there's, is there any other old new business or uh, reports from the, from the offices here? Is there a that here? Anybody want to say anything before we adjourn to go into an executive session? Nope. Any reports? Mr. Manager, do you have any reports that you want to uh, bring up to our attention? Nope, I don't think so. Okay. We're good then. Mm -hmm. All right. At this point, while we're on camera, if you can lead into executive session, then while they're cleaned up in here, we, the two we attorneys can go the are waiting in right. the other conference room. Okay. All right. Pursuant to General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 6, to consider the purchase and value of real property, <coughs> the public discussion of which may be detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the board. And pursuant to General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, to review and discuss strategy related to litigation, namely Bond et al. versus the Ashland Board of Selectmen and Laquadera et al versus the Ashland Zoning Board of Appeals, the public discussion of which may be detrimental effect on the litigate, litigating position of the public body. Do I make a motion? You read it. And I have to read that Just and then it's read. I move pursuant to General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21, A, a Paragraph 6 and Paragraph 3, the board move into executive session to consider the purchase and value of real property, to review and discuss litigation, namely Bon et al., versus the Ashland Board of Selectmen and Lacradera et al. versus Ashland Zoning Board of Appeals, the public discussion which may be detrimental effect on the negotiating and or litigating position of the board. Second. The, all those in favor, and this is a roll call vote. Yeah, Do I have to read, need to last, read the last sentence. Okay. And the Board of Selectmen will not reconvene into regular session at the conclusion of the executive session. So is there a second? Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Sure. Uh, Hackinson, aye. Greaves, aye. Mitchell, aye. Mignani, aye. Who did the original vote? I'll do it. Thank you and good night. Uh, Joe did the original and I did the second. Okay. And I, we will see you on August 5th at our next regularly scheduled selectmen's meeting. Enjoy the summer and be safe.